Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Vampire. The audio in this episode should be better because I don't know why, but for some reason when I'm, when I'm playing on Shadowplay, for this game quite specifically, like all my settings are set correctly, but for this game quite specifically, my audio doesn't separate my microphone track from the system soundtrack. I don't understand why. Like, it seems, it's like a weird eccentricity specifically for this game, and I tried figuring it out and couldn't. So, instead, I decided to just record it with OBS. Dr. Swansea Ooh. is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. Indeed. I just dropped at 18 frames a second. That could be... OB oh, I doubt I'm being CPU limited. I was going to say that could be OBS, but I doubt it's my CPU. Although... Yeah, I am running at a lower frame rate, and I'm, it very much could be OBS, I suppose. So I'm going to explore this place. As for me, what a idiot. Yeah, that is, that is just, frame rate is not as good as with Shadowplay, unfortunately. But what you going to do? I suppose I could do my audio separately in... You know what, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to go up to my office and play the game. So ignore all this sort of meta-talking about all that kind of stuff. It's actually three levels. This is a big hospital. I guess that's like the big wig's office or something. Um, first floor. Although they've got ground first and she said I'm on the second floor, so I actually may be up here. Second floor. Makes sense. Hmm. I may need to fiddle around with this even more, in all honesty. Dr. Swansea. Not now. Alright. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I may need to fiddle around with this, actually. Because recording on this, it's dropping me down to, like... It's going between 60 and, like, 45. Which, I mean, may not be too bad. I'll see how it comes out in the recording, but... Ooh. Axel. I assume it's a melee weapon? Indeed. Cool. Ooh. T. Elwood's medical file. Patient Thomas Elwood, male, age 28. Followed by Dr. Tippett's. Status. Convalescence. Date of admission, September 16th. Date of release to be determined. Notes. The patient's face has been heavily burnt and disfigured by a bomb during the war. Even with the use of strong with the strongest, sedicin, strongest sedatives, he affirms to regular in he affirms to regularly endure severe pain from the wounds, as if the flames were still burning under the skin. He says. Examinations of the crit. Cicatrized. Cicatrized. I don't know that word. Whatever. Uh, tissue shows no trace of inflammation, infection, or swelling. Scars are clean. Could it be a case of persistent nerve damage? The patient never ceases to blame himself for his disfiguration. Could it be a case of guilt of the survivor? Phantom pain manifesting as a punishment for not dying with his comrades. Interesting. I've heard of that happening, actually. Ah! Look at that, look at that shit. That's really cool. Thomas feels responsible for his disfiguration. Just figuration during the war. The fact that you can just learn stuff about that by looking around is really cool. Um, bottle of cheap gin. Doesn't seem sanitary. Well, I mean, I guess it's sanitary. It's bloody alcohol. But, you know, drunk surgeons was more my point. This must be the place. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Interesting. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. Fair enough. Ooh. Right, this is the, um... The DLC stuff. Because I pre-ordered the game because it was like 10 bucks cheaper if I did. Or 5 bucks cheaper or something. 
Uh, let's have a look. So it's... It's a bit better? That goes up to 90 with an upgrade. Uh, let's get the Haxor, I guess. Maybe. You're 58. You can't be upgraded anymore. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'll use it. The combat in the game isn't particularly difficult anyway. Oh. Loading. Um, what I was saying was, often I tend not to use, like, DLC weapons and stuff. Hello? Oh. Cool, I get a bowler hat, too. Um, but I tend not to use, like, DLC weapons and stuff like that, because they're usually overpowered as fuck, but they seem to be balanced fairly well. Ninety six, hundred and thirty five. So it's two hundred damage at max. Let's look at this at max. Same damage at max. It just starts out a bit better. Interesting. Doctor Swansea's message. He wrote this very quickly. <laughs> uh Dear Jonathan, I asked Nurse Crane to secure an office for you on the second floor. Please forgive the uh, austere decoration, but Pembroke Hospital is not exactly the Ritz. Sorry to let you discover your office alone, but I need to sleep a little before going back to work. I'm just to be a mere mortal, after all. I also gave orders to let you rest, and for the staff to never enter your room. You'll be able to sleep all day without being disturbed, and work at night without raising any suspicion. I'm afraid the place is quite messy, but you'll have- uh, but you'll be able to conduct your experiments here at your own pace. You'll also notice there's an opening- open window with a scaffold, and it will allow you to enter and exit the hospital without being noticed. I imagine how awful, new, and disturbing this all must be for you. Believe me, I have studied enough of your species to understand that you must be now be facing and feeling. Be assured, I'll do whatever I can to help you in this ordeal. Know that you're not completely alone facing it. I'm glad I met you. These dark times we are well presently, we are all presently facing. I hope our future collaboration will yield great results. Welcome to Pembroke, my esteemed colleague. We shall talk soon. Yours sincerely, Edgar Griffith Swansea. P.S. I left a copy of some of my notes concerning what I have discovered at Econ in... The last few years. Feel free to read about it if you need some guidance. As long as you don't know this... Don't use this knowledge, take advantage of me. Fair enough. Um, what I have discovered about Econ... I don't know what Econ means. But... I guess I should read his notes and find out. Um... Something else to loot. Nice. Shillings. I assume this is... Yeah. There's that. Anything here to take? No. Uh, crafting. I assume. That's like, that's my balcony, I assume. Um, I'm gonna make sure I get everything here first. Uh, glass vials. I assume I can craft, like, serums and whatever with that. This here. Articon Econs. What I'm actually going to do is read them in this, because it allows me to scroll. It doesn't allow you to scroll down when, it, like, you first open something, which is really strange. I don't know why. In any case. It's a rare opportunity, and almost a privilege to approach a vampire, to observe their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities I have personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires, or Ekon as they prefer to call themselves. There you go. <laughs> I, was, I don't know what an Ekon is, as I said. Reading this may tell me. Supernatural speed. A vampire can act and move like a mortal in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that they have the keenest senses and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, necessity to flee, I've seen a vampire move so quickly as almost as if he had vanished just to reappear somewhere else. The human eye cannot follow their movements when they act so quickly, but it is not a teleport or dematerialization. It is only, su only a supernatural speed. For me, it is a cat-like at attribute, which allows them to run, dodge, or jump longer and faster than us. I also notice that such speed seems to exhaust them and that they are bound to physical limitations. That's interesting. So, like, our teleporty thing isn't actually a teleport. We're just damn fast. Uh, mesmerism. 
One of the most powerful abilities a vampire can deploy is the, cap is the capacity to force a mortal to obey them. I call this tra trait mesmerism, but it has nothing to do with the mortal ability to alter a subject's mental state. A vampire can bend a mortal to their will, and they can even break a mind. A vampire interviewed even told me that more told me the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent the damage will be, as if the vampire could literally fracture their target's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that this ability requires time to master, and that the result could vary wildly from one subject to another. Implant a false memory, erase a painful one, the possibilities are endless. And frightening. Indeed. Blood awareness. This may, the mo may be the most catastro catastrophic ability of all, concerning vampires, since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us. Vampires crave for blood. They must use their will to restrain themselves from frigidly drinking every drop of blood they can see. They need blood to function, and to express their f full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak, even if he cannot die of hunger and thirst. This urge, this need for blood, may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that blood could sometimes blind him, since its smell and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses, a vampire can almost see blood all around them, inside warm bodies, through walls, on a supposedly clean weapon, etc. The same vampire even told me that he can see if a mortal has cleaned blood or is ill and that in some cases he can even sense diseases, infected clothes, or even items in a room. If this is true, it could have some medical- It could ha have so many medical applications, it almost beggars belief. Interesting. So we've kind of used all of them before, because we have like the vampire vision, which is like seeing blood. Look at that. So cool! Um... And we've got supernatural speed with the, I can't do it in here, but the sort of dodge or whatever. And then also we have, what was the other thing I talked about? Oh, mesmerism, which we did down by the docks with that dude. Presumably how you drink blood. Okay. My defensive skills now unlocked. So coagulation, you'll block your target's blood in their veins, making them defenseless. Interesting. Like a stun, I guess? Blood barrier. Create an invisible barrier, absorbing direct damage until it fades or destroys. This... So, that, like, that's like a Quen shield in The Witcher, essentially. You'd hit, like, it'll absorb a hit. This looks more interesting to me. The vampire will concentrate on the prey's blood, stopping them in their tracks and making them defenseless. It's easier to kill something that can't move, indeed. So it's like a, a stun, essentially. And I can afford it? Yep. Cool. Uh, no. I want to confirm. I'm going to do that a lot, because <laughs> I'd like hit escape to get out of menus, and it's like, oh, you want to cancel? Okay, so this district is healthy as opposed to the other ones, which were... I don't think they were unhealthy, I just think they were... Oh, okay. Uh, analyze William Bishop's blood at the workbench, okay. Oh, cool. So you can craft serums, treatments... Weapons... Recyclable. Oh! Oh, so you can break down this junk. Interesting. I'm actually going to do that with all of these. Why not? Okay. Analyze. A fresh sample of William Bishop's blood in a small tube. Light regeneration serum. Regenerate 300 health points instantly, then 150 health points over 15 seconds. And I need sodium hydrochloride solution, and I have everything else. Ferrous tartrate, watery, sturdy blood sample. Fair enough. And a glass file, which I have a bunch of. Fair enough. Can I upgrade this? No. I need a common handle part. I need three common handle parts? Yes. 
number in the top left is how many you need, and the bottom right is how many you have. Okay. Um, William Bishop's blood is much right. more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I have so much time now. Cut himself off there. So obviously I didn't read my, uh... I can't afford anything, I don't think. Um... Yeah, all these things take like 300. Interesting though. Oh. How do I rest without, I guess I can just confirm straight away. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. You don't actually have to spend points to confirm your sleep. <laughs> confirm your sleep. Until my research is complete. I'd better learn to hide my true nature from the mortals. Interesting. But what Hope about I'm... my thirst for blood? Indeed. I was wondering about that. Like the... Hmm. Hello. Yes, Nurse Crane? How can I help you? I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis, you say? Our supply of antiseptics is nearly depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... That does seem what weird. What type of hospital are you running? No antiseptics? You have been away too long, Doctor. With the war and now this epidemic, supplies have been running scarce for months now. Hmm, makes sense. I may have a solution. In France, during the war, drugs shortage was a daily problem, and we had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. However do you mean? If combined correctly, certain household chemical products can be used in a pinch instead. Now, where's the hospital storeroom? The storeroom? Fat chance. This is the Pembroke. And space is luxury we don't have. <laughs> Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. Perhaps I should look there first. Where is this morgue? In the basement, presumably. It's the large building behind the hospital. Oh, separate. You'll need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. The abandoned morgue behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. On my way, then. Thank you, nurse. Um, I'm going to talk yes, to her and see if there's anything else I can say. Yeah, okay. Why then do you always work the nights? Don't you ever sleep? At the Pembroke, we're always hands on deck. Your dedication to the Pembroke does you credit, Nurse Crane, but when do you sleep? We staff get our sleep when we can, Doctor. Nursing is a vocation, not the labor of a journeyman. Dedicated. Lack of sleep and the medical profession always ends in disaster. I've witnessed many a colleague succumb to stimulants to fight exhaustion. Drugs were as deadly as bullets in the trenches. Hmm. London's trenches start here at Pembroke Hospital. We are on the front line, make no mistake. Exactly how bad is the supply situation here at Pembroke? It really depends. Dr. Swansea deftly works his society contacts for monies, but with the quarantine, well, we're in God's hands. Monies? I've never felt it spelt like that, I don't know. Please, could you point me in the direction of the morgue again? It's the large boarded up building behind the hospital. You can't miss it. The key I gave you will open the small back door to it. Okay, cool. That's all for now, Nurse Crane. Thank you. So the way he was asking about when she sleeps, like, to me, implies that she might be a vampire. Although, 
if she was, it's weird that she wouldn't tell you. Well, I guess it's not weird that she wouldn't tell you per se, but it's like, because presumably like vampires can notice other vampires. Would be my assumption anyway. Um, before I go downstairs, I'm gonna see if Dr. Swansea will talk to me. Not now. Nope. <laughs> Not now. Alright, I'm just gonna head off straight away. Although I will have a look through all this place, just for clues to see if I can get some small bottles, for instance. <laughs> I guess this is out the back way anyway, right? Um, at the back of the hospital. So I guess... To find back of the hospital this way, presumably, right? Is that like a trash bin fire? It is indeed a trash bin fire. Oh, it's this building, I guess. Okay, makes sense. Scowl voices in the garden. I should investigate. If they were to find somebody. In the garden? Is this the garden? Interesting. Um, I'm interested to see... Here we go. Uh, sure. And I could go... Does it tell you how much ammo you have for these? Somewhere? I actually like the steak anyway, so I think I'm going to keep the steak, but... I mean, sure. can actually animation cancel, which is what I was just checking there. So if I go to slash, yeah. Whoop, three of them now. And it seems to... I don't know whether this was through an update, but it seems to uh, auto... Whoa. Gotta watch my stamina. I don't know why, but the stamina is less obvious to me in this than it is in, like, say, Dark Souls. I like the combat though, I must admit. Alright. So if he's doing that... Yeah. A photograph of a smiling lover couple with a few words written on the back. Milton and Pippa forever. Hmm. New investigation. Midnight in the garden. The good of evil. Um. Uh. Help Pembroke Crossbow and cope with the epidemic. And to the old morgue. Um. It's all first. Identify and confront a vampire who created me. Okay, so these are completed quests? Um, there was somewhere that I remember seeing an investigations thing. Here we go, local investigations. Uh, here. Bring back the wallet to its owner. Track. Details. I found the wallet in the garden nearby the Pembroke Hospital, probably lost there by its owner, Milton. I'm sure he'll be glad to get it back. Bring back the wallet to its owner. Okay. Um. Oh, 
Okay, cool. So the investigation is like a the head icon. And go through the bins. Why not? What is this? Is this the hospital? Alright, so that's... Maybe? I think this is the hospital. Or it's just a house I can walk through? I'm not sure. In any case, I'm just going to go give this guy's wallet back. Be the good Samaritan. Because... Um... Hello? There's a skill. Sorry about that. It seems that OBS, I hit something when I was fighting that skull and it stopped OBS recording. I didn't actually do much. I wandered around here and I came and started speaking to him, which was the guy I read earlier. I'll go through all the dialogue again because luckily I can. And luckily I noticed that it stopped recording. Um, life in London. How was your stay with us? How was your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. I told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured, I'm smiling inside. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. And that's where I was up to. Annoying that that happened. I think I must accidentally have something in OBS set up. I've never actually used it before, but I think I must have something in OBS set up so where I push like Alt maybe it stops recording or something. I don't know. I'll investigate and find out. Sorry for that. It's an annoying cut, but you didn't actually miss anything, which is good. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Um, it was kind of unclear there, but the first time I did that, it did like the weird sort of screen shake, and I was using like Mesmerize to do it. It kind of sounds like, you can kind of tell because he says it in that kind of deadpan response, but. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. Hmm. Reconstructive surgery has been very successful for some soldiers. I don't want to wear a bloody mask for the rest of my life. I'd rather stay here. Just be forgotten.
Interesting. Interesting. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the German. Reconstruct. I don't want to work. Okay. So you, you can fail. Goodbye for You've disgust on every street corner. Interesting. I guess if I spoke to him, if I chose the quote-unquote correct things, this looks like the guy... Oh no, this is the priest, right? We're getting up there in time, unfortunately. Because, as I've said, my internet is really crap. I'm hopefully upgrading it very soon, but until then. Um, I'm going to, before I end the episode, I'm going to walk around. I'm going to find this guy with the wallet. Because I want to give him his wallet back. It's locked, all right. Oh, this one's not, though. It's locked. Ooh, a long letter. Birmingham, Birmingham, 27th October. Hello, sis. Air things in the big city. Here in Brum. Things are not so good. I don't think this is a Brummy accent. Whatever. It seems the flu is here again. We have many new cases of infection in the neighbourhood. Do you remember Mrs. Scheller? The old drinking hare from the third floor? She passed away two days ago. And her flat's already occupied again. Sheesh. You would have to pay me a huge amount of money to go sleep in the bed in which a woman died of the flu just a few hours ago. Sorry. I did not take time to quickly answer your last letter. Between taking care of little Paul, mum, dad, and my job at the factory, I barely find time to write... Barely find time to write to my favourite sister. I skipped a line. By the way, my son says hello to his auntie Pippa. You should see the little bugger, already driving me mad. And mum wants, wants you to bring some of those marvellous cakes next time you come back home. In your last letter, you told me you thought about quitting your job after the Pembroke Hospital. I have to tell you, Pip, you better think twice. There's always jobs at the factory, but wages are shit, and it's boring as a day without a shag. Oh, I have a new fiancé, and no, I'm not just like you moral bitch, you. Oh, this is written by a woman, I think. Interesting. I thought it was, for some reason I thought it was written by a man. I don't know why. There was no reason to suspect that. In any case. So if you really want me to quit and do something more useful than counting the dead every morning, maybe you better stay in London and join that band you told me about. The Guard of Priffin? Ooh. Something like that. Presumably the Prewin guard who kill vampires? Ooh. Uh, never heard of them, but if they're, like you said, some sort of civil militia trying to make a difference, then maybe it's a good choice for you. Let's be sure to let the others go in... Just be sure to let the others go in front. That's how my poor Billy got killed in France. By leading too many patrols. Bloody war. Anyway, come back as soon as you can and give me all the good news before that. I am your affectionate sister. And then Lucy, Paul, Mum, Dad, the other people signed. I think the reason I thought it was a man writing to his sister was because he said sis. I don't know why, but that sort of shortening of sister doesn't sound like... Like, you don't often hear two sisters talking to each other like that. I'm not sure why. I'm not going to talk to her yet, but that's interesting. So she's thinking about joining the vampire hunters? Does that mean she knows about vampires, or she just thinks that they're a militia trying to help? It's locked, all right. Hard to tell one way or the other. But um, if I go left and check this courtyard, perhaps. Good evening. I'm Doctor Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague? Are you a doctor too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Jadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Jadana. Pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean, you used to be a doctor? Was your license revoked? No, sir. It is just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. I can respect that. Oh, we can trade. Please show me what you have to sell. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful. Uh, codeine, opium, and enigma formula. This formula written on a piece of paper seems complex and needs to be analyzed. Okay. I'll buy that. It's like all my money, but... And this is my shit that I can sell, right? Indeed. But I won't. Um, I really need to find... Well, I say need to. I really want to find this guy. 
You don't look correct. Where is inventory? Here. Yeah. This guy. So he's got a beard. Might be black? I can't actually tell from that. Because it looks more like a sketch than it does a photograph. My initial thought was he was a black guy, but looking at it a second time, he may not be. Um, there's a woman here visiting this guy. Okay. Um, because we're getting up there in time, I'll cut if I haven't already done so, and until we find this guy, and come back if anything interesting happens. Okay, we're back. I figured out an easy way to find people when you're trying to base them off what they look like. Makes it a lot easier. Oh look, this guy. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Oh, cool. I have some good news, Milton. What? The epidemic's over? I retrieved your wallet with all the money and a certain picture. Well, yeah, Pippa Hawkins is my girl. So what? Is it the difference of skin color that bothers you? Not at all, Milton. Good. Please, take this money anyway, to remind you to keep your mouth shut. Not everybody is as broad-minded as you, Dr. Reed. Hmm. You paid me 40 shillings for that. Holy shit. That's a lot of money, given the time. So, I was correct. He is black. Milton and Hawkins are a couple. Um, Pippa and Milton Hooks are a couple. Pippa is about... He's thinking about quitting the hospital. Uh, let's trade. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Milton's shotgun. Holy shit, that does a lot of damage. It's also very expensive. Um... Oh, he's only got two. I mean, I'll buy them. Uh, how much do I have? 53. I'll buy shotgun shells as well. I don't think I need 12. I'll buy like 5. Uh, common handle part. I think. I'll buy that too. Because I need a common handle part to upgrade my sword, I think. That'll do. Um. I think I'll talk to him. I'll finish. I'll do like the full dialogue tree in here Good and evening, then. Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still we'll trying to save lives. Indeed. And then we'll finish up for today. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know, and by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. Fair enough. How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything. And it's getting worse every day. It's fucking awful. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance <laughs> driver since... Too long, I guess. I'll bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. 
So it sounds like uh, Jonathan Reed doesn't actually like him smuggling guns much, but I'm perfectly fine with it. So we'll ignore the disapproving tone of voice. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing here. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. It's a shame there. I mean, I didn't entirely expect it, but it didn't, like, kind of... They could have done, like, extra recording lines to realise that I've already been there and got the wallet, but it's a small development. I'm not going to be that harsh on it. I've been spoiled by The Witcher. Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. That will be the scowls, presumably. Hmm. Okay. Um. So I did your life in London. Okay, personal questions. Um. I'm not gonna do that yet. Goodbye, Milton. Because I failed that other hint, I'm gonna try and see if I can find out more about people before I do their hints. But I do want to talk to people about that because it's really, really interesting. And I guess the 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 thing is, you've also got to realize we're in 1918, so a black guy having a relationship with a white woman, not particularly, not particularly uh, accepted. This is supposed to be a hospital. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. I ended up recording for like an hour, but I think the actual cut down will be close to half an hour. Because I faffed about around the middle. Faffed about. Alright. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. As a side note, I realized pushing alt stops my recording on OBS for some reason. I'll fix that hotkey because that shouldn't be a thing.